This episode of What If It's Cool is brought to you by Respo Clothing. Respo Clothing, we can get the latest merchandise from all the stars, including Luke Resner, Som, Savannah Rowe, Nova Nichols, and my personal favourite, Conflict Axiom. So make sure you check out Respo Clothing. You can find them on Facebook and on Instagram. Alpha Pro Wrestling presents Glorious Purpose, happening on February 10th at the Sunbury Memorial Hall, featuring the 14-man heavyweight championship tournament. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Before you check out Glorious Purpose, make sure to check out Energy, happening also on February 10th at 2pm at the Sunbury Memorial Hall. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Adrenaline Pro Wrestling presents Breakout 39, happening on February 16th, featuring the up-and-coming stars of Adrenaline Pro Wrestling. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Mayhem Pro presents Showcase, The Road to Mayhem Mania, happening on February 16th. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Prepare for combat. <coughs> I mean, MXW presents Mildy Combat, happening on March 2nd at the Sets Mildura. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. <laughs> Hello, welcome to another episode of What If It's Cool, the show where we talk about anything and everything that is cool in a world today. I am the green machine known as Daniel Paul Crow, and on this episode, I have a sit-down interview with Savannah Rowe. We talk about how she got into the world of professional wrestling, coming up with the character of Savannah Rowe, and getting to know this up-and-coming star. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. That was sent three weeks ago with Savannah Rowe. Firstly, thank you so much for being a part of What of a School. I have been waiting for this for so long because not only, you know, we're friends outside of wrestling, but, you know, I'm a genuine fan as well. Um, I'm going to be flat honest. One of the biggest things, that, you're not on my top 10 just yet, but you're getting there of mm. people who I'm actually scared of. And do you want to know, uh, can you guess why um, you, you're starting to creep up onto that? Has it got something to do with that really cool bend back that I do? No, 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 no. It's not, not it? that. No, it's actually from the match that you have with Chris Law. I have Ooh. never seen, and I hope this doesn't come off as of me being sexist when I say this, but I've never seen a woman take that many chops to the chest as you did and live to tell the tale and give it back like you did. So that was fucking scary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but firstly, how are you? How are you doing? I'm very good. Um, as I just mentioned before, just finished up having a very nice dinner. Um, yeah, not much going on at the moment. I'm pretty boring. Oh, well, that, 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 oh, you did you did just uh, come back from uh, Extreme Capital Wrestling, and yes. um, that that's why we one of the reasons why we have you on here today because um, I want to firstly before I even ask about your career, I want to firstly ask firstly how did you get booked? How did it go? And what was the experience like? Uh, with ECW itself. Mm -hmm. So it's actually pretty funny. Um, I didn't realize that I had been asked to do that show until about three weeks after I was actually asked. Um, so I, I saw the message at, uh, it was on the way back from All for One MXW. Mm -hmm. And I saw, I had this message request that I hadn't seen in my Instagram and I looked at it and sure enough, it was ECW management asking me if I want to come on and wrestle next Jade. Uh, and they had sent that message three weeks ago at that point. <laughs> so I, I very quickly messaged them back. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't see it. <laughs> um, and, of course, I've said, you know, if the if the opportunity is still there, I'd be happy to take it. Mm. Uh, and it was. And off I went. All right. Well, uh, what was what was the experience like um, going, going up there first? Because it's your first interstate booking, I believe. And um, first time taking on... Oh, how, how do you put it politely? A witch, perhaps. Is that the best way to describe? Is that the best way best way to describe her? We'll use witch. Um, the, the first initial could probably be changed, you know. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it was a lovely, lovely trip. Um, I had a very good weekend away, uh, with all my friends in wrestling. Obviously, got to spend some time with a couple of the cooters, um, Matt Graves. Uh, yeah. That was a lot of fun. Uh, the drive was, you know, it was a drive. <laughs> I was passenger <laughs> princess, so I didn't have to do anything. Mm. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, the match itself with Nyx. Yeah, <laughs> that that happened. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I can't wait for it to premiere. I believe it's going to be on YouTube eventually. I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not a. I don't wait for ECW, um, but um, hopefully it's going to be coming up because um, uh, why am I about to say John Stop Action? Um, John John L. Crosshire has said um, to me that it should be on YouTube soon, so I can't wait to see that because um, it looks pretty good. I'm hoping that it is because I would love, love to see that f***ing skull shot that she got on me. Oh, we probably should do an episode of Reaction Wrestling Wednesdays and uh, and d d dissect that that match and. Uh, Yeah, you can let off a little bit of anger when we do that, and yeah, go from there. Sounds like a great plan. Mm. All right. Well, firstly, how did you uh, come into wrestling? Not getting um, into the industry itself, but what, how did you actually um, discover wrestling as a whole? So I found it um, between the years of about 2012 to roughly 2014. Um, I... honestly just was bored um <laughs> would get home from school and I would be like hmm, what's on Foxtel at the moment um and nine times out of ten I, I would be scrolling through and I'd see like Raw or Smackdown was on um so started watching fell in love with it um mm. I it was Bray Wyatt in particular that got me into it um that's a, another story we'll get into details there mm. um it was actually really funny I used to I used to not be able to watch it for very long um, because my little sister didn't like it when I first started watching. So I would, you know, sit down, watch a couple minutes and then she would come in and be like, eh, change the channel. Rah, rah. Um, so instead of laying down and taking that, um, I instead got her obsessed with it as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then we both started watching it together for a couple of years uh, and it was good fun. All right. Well, that, that's that's pretty cool. Um, like, uh, like th that period, twenty twelve to twenty fourteen, not the best era to get into, if I, if I may may say. It's just uh, when you when you when you're brought up in the eighties, that's how fuck, <laughs> that's how fuck old I am, people. Um, and also have a, a if you if you're from an Asian background who had access to tapes from Japan, like I did. Um, I think I grew up in the best period, to be honest. So, you know, from from you know. the uh, start of the WWF to, you know, the Attitude Era to Nitro to all that stuff and watching stuff from old Japan and what was now, what is now new Japan as well. That was a great period to, to grow up in. And um, I'm just surprised because like, I, I don't know many people who watched uh, uh, wrestling during that period who were still fans because the product wasn't, especially, I, I don't mean to shit on the product as a whole, but it, it, it let's be honest, it wasn't, it wasn't that great. Look, for someone who literally had like bare minimum prior knowledge, like um, other than that, the only other knowledge that I had was playing Raw vs. Smackdown 2008 at my dad's house. Um, and, you know, so like from that I knew, you know, the people I knew like The Undertaker, Rey Mysterio, you know, they were my favourites. Um, but not having much prior knowledge as far as I was concerned at the time, it was the yeah. greatest thing I was watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but obviously now um, I, I did stop watching around about 2014. I dropped off and then I didn't pick it back up again until I started training. Um, but, yeah, so since then, obviously, uh, being in the, in the indie scene, um, I've been educated <laughs> and I've been told what is the good stuff to watch. Um, definitely. Attitude Era stuff I absolutely adore is so good and I'm so mad that I wasn't old enough to know or appreciate it. Like I probably would have been either not born or very, very young at that stage. So <laughs> Yeah, so I keep forgetting how much older I am uh, compared to you. Um, look, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there as well. When it comes to the attitude, there is a lot that I I still will watch religiously. It's uh, for, it was so good. There's so much of it that I I just nah, I can't. I, it, it, not 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 because I'm woke or anything like that. It's just like it's just it's either just terrible angles. <laughs> so excuse me. Um. Or you know, it, it it's just it's just um it's just degrading. You know, there's a lot of, there was a lot of things that like, and I'm not talking about you know like the diva stuff. And there was a lot of things that were degrading in the in the nineties uh, for both WCW, ECW, um, WWF or WWE for uh, people playing at home. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm I think the one one thing that we can all agree on: Stone Cold, Goldberg, The Rock, Triple H, gold, absolute gold. Absolutely. Mm. Um, again, those are all people that I didn't really have any like major knowledge on. Obviously, I knew who The Rock was. <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> you have yet to be, you know, living under a rock to not know. Um, but it was one of those things that, like, 
I didn't really know or appreciate anything about them until I started training uh, at APW. Mm. Um, and yeah, I obviously have been watching a lot of that stuff um, now, kind of catching up. And Stone Cold Steve Austin in particular is one of those people who's a bit of an inspiration to me now, just because I absolutely adore the way that he carried his character and his persona. Uh, and it's very, very accurate for the way that, you know, Savannah likes to portray herself, um, being very anti-authoritarian, in it for herself type of thing. Mm. I think I, I do see that a lot in your in you in, about to say in your character in your work as well, and it, it's 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 good to see because you know like the best the best sort of characters that are out there and best gimmicks that are out there. It's just you know people who who uh, you know only see themselves and they just want to look out for number one. Um, I think there's like one of my one of my all time favorites. I don't always bring him up, but I but I. And love him harley race like er early 70s stuff of his like where he's just really just a badass heel love it absolutely love him now you're saying that you you dropped off on wrestling for for a little bit before you got into um into training firstly when exactly did you start training and how did you uh discover uh, training here in australia that is a great story so um i started training around about the end of 2020 this was just before we went into the really really big lockdown in victoria mm -hmm. um so i i got maybe three or four training sessions in and then pff, was out for a year <laughs> um but yeah so i started training around then and the way that i actually got into it was through the supernova convention um as some people may know they do wrestling shows there at the convention mm -hmm. um, obviously just for you know promotion and stuff um and i happened to run into uh two very prolific wrestlers in apw jason crash and zane zodiac um and got to talking to both of them just you know general stuff just you know oh my god you guys are so awesome this stuff that you do is incredible mm. um and eventually got onto the topic of training and would we be interested in doing it um from there we found out that where I was living at the time was literally a hop, skip and a jump away from the training facility. <laughs> um, so, you know, I got, we got told, Oh my God, you're in Seaford. We're in Seaford. Come train with us. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. And yeah, that's basically how that happened. <laughs> All right. Well, talk me through about your first training session. Um, was it instantly you were bitten by the bug or was it uh, or something else? Or talk, talk me through your first session. It was pretty instantaneous. I'm not going to lie. Um, it was definitely rough. I've never been a very sporty person. Like growing up, I would find any excuse under the rainbow to get out of doing sports in school. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, it was one of those things. I think just the community and the vibes was really, really good. Um, and I remember after that first session, I was so sore. I couldn't move the next day. But I couldn't wait to go back. It was freaking awesome. Oh, right. Well, the, the, I, I hear that a lot where people are just like, you know, they, they completely saw them just like, what did you expect? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I, 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 I'll never get in the ring. And for everyone who keeps asking, I am not going to be in the ring. I will be a manager. I'll be a commentator. I'll be an interviewer. I am not getting in the ring. I am 37 <laughs> years old. I cannot do this stuff anymore. I got arthritis in both my knees. Stop it. It's not happening. And for my nephew, JJ, it's not happening. Okay. <laughs> oh, not even for the nephew. Come on. No, nah, no, nah, can't do it. <laughs> no. Nah. Put it, put it, put it, put it this way. I, I, I don't have a walk, walkie stick anymore. But that's a different story for another, another, another episode. But I do struggle to get out of bed. You know, so I'm not doing this anymore. It's, it's just not in me. I would have if I look. If I was maybe uh, twelve years younger, <laughs> right? I probably would. Probably would get in the ring, but not anymore. I just no. Nah. Can't do Fair it. Valid. Fair yeah. And valid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, one, one, once you get off us and both things talk to me, you know, but that's, <laughs> it's not, it's not fun. Trust me, guys. Um, but like f f from this, tra from this training, obviously, you know, you were sore, but anyway, you were digging it. And then obviously we had that really bastardly horrible lockdown. Oh God. I'm just having really bad flashbacks of that. Um, you know, what kept you motivated to keep going? Honestly, it was thinking about my character. Um, so 
one of the things that I've always loved about wrestling, even back 2012 when I was first starting watching, was the characters and the performances that they would do. Mm. Uh, the actual wrestling itself was kind of, yeah, give or take. It was the stories that would get me. Mm. Um, and the character, Savannah Rowe, was actually one that I had created, mm, I want to say maybe five years prior to mm. actually starting wrestling. Um and I just remember the entirety of that lockdown. I was sitting there imagining what my character could be. And eventually I took this, you know, character that I had made a couple of years ago, who <laughs> was a vampire at the time. Um, and I. Of course made... she was. <laughs> you know, Although, we're, we're uh, before, before, before we continue, <laughs> uh, Twilight or the Vampire Diaries? Neither. I actually oh, didn't watch either Thank you, of Lord. Them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> talk, talk me through okay what, where, where does it come from so it was actually from um just a story that i had been writing uh, of my own volition mm. um i t- can't remember the name of it for the life of me but um she was basically this character in the story that i was writing um it was basically just this big you know the the basic vampires versus werewolves type of thing mm. um and yeah basically she was just this little psycho rat that would annoy people at every chance that she got <laughs> <laughs> um and i <laughs> she's lovely um, i love it i love it <laughs> there's no better way to describe the character even now as, as the wrestling persona she's just a psycho little rat that just likes to annoy people hmm. all right hey, 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 the, 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 you know it's you, you can be called worst things in this world and i think that's okay hey rats are adorable i take it as a compliment hmm. <laughs> so anyway so I, I essentially I took this character um who was originally you know just like this random vampire that I came up with for some random story mm. um and over the course of the lockdown period I kind of took her and changed her morphed her into um the Savannah Row that we know and love today um obviously took a lot of inspiration from as I mentioned Bray Wyatt he is my ultimate idol in wrestling I absolutely adore him and his character work and yeah, that's how she came about. <laughs> where where does the name actually come from? Because I, I I keep thinking like it's going to be this and this and this, but I just can't even fathom where where did it come from. Talk me through. So it's actually funny. The name Savannah was just a random name that I picked out for the character uh, ages ago. Mm-hmm. Um, the the last name, however, has a bit more of an interesting story. It's actually from the main character of my favorite game, which is Infamous Second Son. Uh, the main character's first name is Delson Rowe, so I took Rowe. Ah, okay, fair enough. Because it's, it's such a sweet name, but then when it, then when they look at you in the ring, I'm going, she's not sweet. <laughs> that was that was exactly the plan with it. I wanted to go for something that was misleading. You'd hear it and you'd think, oh, that sounds like a really sweet, like, you know, uh Natalia, like, you know, something like that. You think you think of that name and it's like, oh yeah, really sweet girl. And then you see her and you're like, oh. <laughs> well, I, I still remember um I can't remember which breakout I was at, and your name was 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 on was on the list. I'm thinking. Oh, she sounds like very sweet. And then you came out, you're in, you're in a leather jacket and you look so sweet. And then the next time I saw you, this character comes out and I went, she ain't sweet, but I'm becoming a fan of us very, very quickly. Like, hey. like there, there's, there's, there's certain, certain people that you see in wrestling and you just go, okay, I get that. I get that character. You can see it. But as you were walking out the first time I saw you as fully as you know who you are now as, as savannah right yeah it went from okay i kind of get it okay i think i got it yeah i'm pretty sure i get it and then <laughs> all of a sudden you you leaned over and went like that i'm like okay now i don't get it and then you did i can't for the life of me exactly what you said and what you did but i went i don't i don't get it and i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm my eyes are literally locked on to this, to this one um segment that you were doing i'm like <laughs> Okay, um, I'm 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 a fan. Definitely want to check her out. So, and, and when I say check her out, I mean you know good match. <laughs> um, because yeah, I've got to be careful because my missus listens to the show. Um, but yeah, like I, I I was instantly a fan just for just from just from looking at that. And um, oh, thank you. Yeah, and again, does not me kissing your ass. I I I, I, gen- I this is my general fe- general feelings about this one. Um. Because yeah, like the, the like there's there's a lot of people just capture your eyes straight away, and you and and you definitely definitely did. And the the 
the piece of resistance for you, I think, is is your um is your ring gear as well. Um, obviously, like for a lot of people, they see um Harley Quinn. Um, for me, I don't, I don't, I don't know. That wasn't what first came to my mind. I was thinking, um, oh my god, I can't even. I I, I was thinking about it all day, and I've forgotten the character's name now. There was another character from another two series from the from the nineties that was very similar to Harley Quinn, but she was more. She didn't have that sort of like um nicey um demeanor. She was actually completely like one A like she's like, Yes, I want you to die. Are I we just thinking Shigo mayhaps? Oh come oh. from Kim Possible? Because that that's another one that I've gotten quite a lot. The No, the no, no, no. This is from this is early nineties. So I'm I'm just blanking on the character. Talk me through just the design of your ring gear firstly. Like did you really want it to be to, to look like a little bit like Harley Quinn or um or something or somebody else? Yeah, so no, Harley Quinn was definitely the biggest inspiration. Um I remember when I was designing it, I took a lot of inspiration from her Arkham City attire specifically mm. uh, because, you know, just the the half and half black and red, I thought it was just such a cool concept. Uh, and considering Harley Quinn is probably the biggest inspiration for the character aside from, you know, the Cheshire Cat, for example, <laughs> um, she <laughs> she's the biggest inspiration for the character and she is where I get a lot of the uh, mannerisms and the characteristics from. So it, you know, at the time, just leap of logic was, you know, let's take some inspiration from her most iconic outfits as well. Mm. Um, and I actually remember I had a couple of first drafts of the gear design where I actually had a corset that I was going to wear as well, uh, which was going to further mimic Harley Quinn's attire in uh, Arkham City. So she's she's got like this little corset thing that she wears and I was going to make a fake one because... Lord knows I'm not wrestling in a real corset. That'd be bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it was the, the biggest things that I took away from that were the half and half design. Um, don't ask me where the green came from. It just happened. <laughs> and I've just run with it ever since. <laughs> I, 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 I like the green. Um, but did you, did you ever thought about doing the, um, the heat gear that she had in the, in the early, uh, early versions of the Batman anime series or. Oh, like the little, the little jester hat thing. Yeah. No, it's not something that I've ever really gelled with personally. I've always much preferred, you know, she has like the pigtails, um, whether it be just the straight blonde or she's got the dyed tips as well. Um, yeah, no, nah, that, that, that sort of headgear I just didn't think would really gel well with what I was going for. Um, mm. Obviously, we don't want to be exact copies to <laughs> what we're No, you don't. So. I, I just I just couldn't couldn't imagine you having that. It's just every time I, I think of that, I don't know if you've ever seen the TV series um, – Oh my god! Now I just blanked on the show too. It was a spin. It was a <sighs> Birds of Prey. That's it. That's what it's called. Birds of Prey. It was a, a spin off of, of like a Batman TV show, but it was centered on the obviously the characters of the Birds of Prey, and um, the woman who played uh, Harley Quinn in this one was the woman who who was the um, the girlfriend in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, and they okay. actually and they actually dressed her in that costume with 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 the um with the headgear. Yeah, and it just looked. Terrible. It's like, it's one of those concepts ugh. that looks great in two D form, but bring it into three D and it starts to get a little bit questionable. <laughs> yeah, go go to go to Ozcon during the during the year and you can see some really terrible ones out there. Um, oh, <laughs> not 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 that I'm naming names, but I've just they're, they're out there and it, they're they're not they're not that great to look at. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. So talk talk me through. So you're you're obviously doing a bit of training. You have the lockdown through. How long before you get into the ring? So if I remember correctly, it was about a year after that point that I had started training. So mm. um, obviously we had that really big lockdown that kind of slowed everything down in general, um, not mm. just in my training journey, just like in general, everything was like, um, <laughs> so yeah. it took me a little bit of time to kind of get back from that as well. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think after that stage, it was about a year, um, I believe if I recall my debut was in August of 2022. I think okay. if I remember correctly, in 2022, 20, yeah, no, it would have been 2022. Yeah, it was 2022. Cause I, 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 I remember the segment that you had with um, Influential Fortune, I believe that one where they were trying to get you to wear a paper bag or something. <laughs> They're trying um, to put those on me. <laughs> was that, I, I want to say that was just before end of the road. So I'm going to say that was November. Yes. Yeah. So my yeah. first, um, so, okay. So actually I should, I should clarify. Technically my debut was actually in the first APW battle to survive Royal Rumble. Mm. Um, 
I, <laughs> so, so this, this technically, this was my first debut. Mm. Um, this was before I had anything sorted out. So I didn't even have like gear or anything. I was literally just in like jeans and black top with my hair. I had like low pigtails instead of the high ones that I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did not uh, have wait, 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 were you were you called Savannah Row at this point? Or? I was. I was okay. still Savannah Row at this point. I've okay. been Savannah Row pretty much since the start. That hasn't changed. Okay. <laughs> um and yeah, I remember specifically with this debut, if you'll call it that, mm. um, my music didn't work. <laughs> so originally I was gonna use Welcome to the Family by Avenge Sevenfold. Mm. Frickin' banger. Um I pardon the language, I sh you not the first drum beat played and then dead silence. And I was just sitting there backstage like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> what, like, what? what a way to debut. You're getting all excited all of a sudden. <laughs> Lift, that's exactly what it was too. Because <laughs> you, you know what, you know what would come to my mind if that happened going, wait, oh wait, so you're evoking my debut? Is this not happening? Really? I'm just going to no. go back. I'm going yeah. home. Okay, cool. Cool. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, I wish that's what happened. You know what actually happens? You got pushed, didn't you? Joel Bateman came back and grabbed me. <laughs> of course he did. I and not, and knowing Joel, he would have gone, get out there, kid. Come on. Let's go. No, no, no. No, I remember this vividly oh. because I had shit hung on me for months after it. Joel comes backstage. Yes. Uh, as he's going backstage, I hear, who's next? Who the heck is next? And he comes backstage and he grabs me and he's like, you ready? I'm like, yeah. And he <laughs> carries me out, throws me into the ring, and he yells, fresh meat. <laughs> and then I proceeded to DDT him on his head. <laughs> I love you, Joel. I really do. Oh, it was so good. I'll <laughs> never not be thankful for him doing that. Oh, wow. Oh, God, I love you, Joel. You're I really so do. <laughs> oh, so my God. Where can I... That, is that on YouTube or is that on um, IWTV? I believe Thanks. it is on YouTube, if I'm right. not mistaken. It is the first Battle to Survive um, Royal Rumble. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to go look at it though if you don't want to. <laughs> it's not necessary. Oh, don't worry. I'm definitely going to do that. There might be an episode uh... of Reaction Wrestling Wednesdays with John L. Crossfire. No. <laughs> That's a good idea. No, it's not. <laughs> John? If you're watching or listening, um, yeah, that's going to be the next one we're going to be doing uh, next week, Mum. Uh, no, no. <laughs> that's what we're doing. John, if you're listening, <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> John, I know where you live too. <laughs> 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 but okay, so but you're but so obviously that that's uh, your de your. I guess I guess you can call that your official debut, but not technically. You know, but not... It was yeah, technically it was my official debut. Mm. But I like to consider my official debut being my match with James Marshall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of James Marshall, make sure to use the hashtag James Marshall OnlyFans. Let's make it happen. Um, oh, God, I'm wearing a Coptic Axiom T-shirt too, which is, uh, you know, you can get uh, by DMing, DMing anybody from uh, Coptic Axiom and uh, also from our sponsors, Respo Clothing. Make sure to check out Respo Clothing on YouTube, uh, on YouTube, on um, Facebook and on Instagram at Respo Clothing. Uh, that's a cheeky plug. Um, speaking Alternatively, of, get a Savannah Row shirt. Yeah. Who said that? Um, spe speaking, speaking of um, uh, my sponsor, I, I still am waiting for my Savannah Row show. I've been waiting for a while for that. Um, that could be my fault. <laughs> It is your fault. Um, <laughs> that's okay. It, it, it's fine. Um, wow, what was I saying? Oh yeah, no, yeah, because we're talking, we're talking, we're, we're talking about the bitch anyway. Um, so you have a uh, you have a match with um, James Bitch Marshall. Oh, sorry. I did, I did, I did say I was going to lay off a little bit on him this 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 year. So I do apologize, um, James. Um, I love you. Um, if you see my if you see my TikTok recently, <laughs> that's a lot. Um, <laughs> talk me through that match. How did it go? It was pretty amazing. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. Um, so obviously, probably no secret. Um, James Marshall and I are engaged. What? 
<laughs> oh my god! This is this is no this is news to me. I I oh, oh how could you fall in love? With, I can't lie. I can't lie. <laughs> it's not a secret. Oh, I've, known, I've, known, I've known this. I knew this before before I even met before I even met you. So like exactly, it's not yeah. a secret. People yeah. know it's fine. Mm. Um, and, and if you watched the vodcast recently, you could see you know Savannah actually saying that's my man. So yeah, did I? Wow. <laughs> Anyway, so, yeah, so we were engaged. Um, so at the time that we were uh, planning this match, we were obviously living together. Mm. Still are, but, like, different house. Um, mm. And so we essentially um, got the really l- lucky opportunity to, you know, be in the same vicinity the entire time that we were planning this match. Mm. Um, and, yeah, it just just went really, really smoothly. We pretty much would you know, go through things in the, in the living room, in the kitchen, um, and we would just, you know, decide what we wanted to do. Um, and then, yeah, show day rolls around and, yeah, it went pretty much perfectly. Um, I didn't really forget anything. Um, I won, so, you know, that was nice too. <laughs> oh, so so you you won your match with uh, – I, I don't think I was at this one. Which This is a breakout uh, – So this was breakout 29. Oh yeah, this one I wasn't available to, yeah. to go. Yeah, I remember. Um, so yeah, yeah I'd love a, to check it out. Oh, it, honestly, great show overall. Mm. Um, and this particular match, it was a fun one um, because obviously I won, which was mm. a lot of fun. Um, but the I think I, I think won, I'm pretty sure you're the first one who's had a debut with James Marshall who actually won. Exactly. Is that, is that, be, is that because um, you're better than him and he knows it? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. Cool. Beautiful. Just, 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 I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making sure that you know that we, we know who I'm siding with on on, on, on your on your two on your two sides. Ah, yeah. smart man. You won't be haunted later. So, um, what was I saying? Yeah. So basically, match went really, really well. Um, mm. the finish was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, if you haven't seen it, bit of a spoiler. Um, JSA came out, made the distraction. I was able to get the win off of it. it was absolutely wonderful. Um, and then Marshall and JSA went on to have a brutal hardcore match and kill each other. Yep. Um, I do plan to have them on an episode of Reaction Wrestling Wednesdays to discuss that match because oh, it, is, it is a very ripper match. But um, generally, most of the time, it's your fiance that f- it, up, f- it up for everybody because he. I keep saying, you know, when are you going to do it? Oh, yeah, we'll do it and then. We'll do it and then. We're doing it. It's now f-ing January <laughs> and it's been going on for six months, James. Fucking hell! Why am I calling? Yeah. Why? Why the fuck am I calling James Marshall? Jesus Christ! That's that's well, how I angry I am. Call him James. His name is Marshall. What are you talking about? Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my God! Well, you've had the, you've had all this training with APW, and it's going to bring me to the staple question here. What if it's cool? What is your favorite James? Oh, f- me! Ah, oh. one more time. One more time. Yeah, I know. This. I know. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. I ha- and I've got James Marshall on the brain because I keep uh, keep saying he needs to make his f-ing only fans. Um, he does. Oh Do you know? And I guarantee, I guarantee he'll he'll be able to get it done like that. And like I keep like I said in the uh, in previous episodes, I know exactly how this is going to go down. He's going to make it right. He's going to promote it, and, and he'll make lots of money. But when you click into the subscribe everything, it's going to be photos of me. Hands down, I know. It because- <laughs> And you know, and you know what the sad thing is? I'm okay with it. I think that'll be absolutely hilarious. If people, if people subscribe to his OnlyFans, if he pitches in me, um, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but what is your favorite Jason Crash story? Oh wow! Um, God, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> don't worry. The next time we have you on here, you can tell another one. Oh, you know what? I'll tell I'll tell a recent one. So recently, um, we were we had MXW goodness gracious. Um, that was a lot, a lot of fun. Obviously, good to have my match with Frank Graham. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot, a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, while we were setting up the ring, um, yeah. Jason Crash was doing as Jason Crash does. He was kind of leading the charge, um, you know, helping out wherever he could. He's a good guy like that. Mm. Um, and I I didn't see exactly what happened because I happened to turn my head away at the exact moment that it happened, but someone had left the screwdrivers that we used to tighten the turnbuckles in the turnbuckle. Yeah. And crash went eye first into the pokey end of the screwdrivers. Oh, 
dropped like a sack of shit and uh thankfully nova was behind him and caught him and i the oh, terrifying oh. but ended up being a little bit funny because at the end of it i asked him i'm like oh my god are you okay and he's turned to me and he's like no oh, i kind of hurt actually <laughs> Oh God! I I I I think I I think I would have been shit bricks if I saw that. Oh my I was, God! I was I was literally sitting there because, like I said, I only saw the tail end of it. All I was all, yeah. I whipped my head around and I've just seen crash in Nova's arms, like looking half dead. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> oh my God! Oh oh oh, uh, Just um, yeah. When you when you set up uh, the ring, guys, uh, just make sure that everything is taken out because. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a that's a sight for sore eyes. I, I, I never want to see that. Um, um, look, it was an honest uh, mistake at the end of the day, and he yeah, is, it is okay, thankfully. Like, there's no serious injury that took place that I'm aware of. So, yeah. and like I said, the funny bit was genuinely just him turning to me and just going, "Oh yeah, it hurt a little bit." <laughs> what is next for Savannah Road? Because we've only just started uh, 2024, and obviously you are on the upload. Sh it's upload, right? The, yes. the MXW upload show yeah. for MXW for. Uh, I'm about to say glorious purpose. Uh, gl gl glorious, gra hang on. goodness gracious. Hang on. There you go. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Yep. Goodness gracious. Cool. God, say that. Th <laughs> say that three times, um, everybody. Um, and we have uh, break. We've we've got breakout coming out. Um, not next week. The week after when this comes out. But you're not on that show, are you? I'm not. So that breakout, I will. I say sadly, but it's not really sad because I'm pretty excited. I will be back in Perth uh, visiting my friends and family. Haven't seen them in a couple of, about a, about a year or, so, or more. Mm. Um, so that'll be a lot of fun for that one. Um, MXW Upload, however, um, I will definitely be there. Uh, I have some unfinished business that I need to settle. Thank you, Grime. Mm-hmm. Mm. I don't exactly take too kindly to getting misted in the face. Yeah, it says a lot if a man, if a man had to spit spit in your face. Um, ah, Frank, I'm just joking. Okay, I just I, I just I'm just playing for the for the show. It's not like you know I'm 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 you know asking to be sprayed in the face as well. I don't want that to happen because I don't want to clean my face after this. Um, but yeah, the, it, it's it's not fun. Mm. It, 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 it it didn't burn or anything or anything. Oh, yeah. No, so it was the strangest thing. It hit, everything went black, and then I kicked out, and it was three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy about the situation, can't you tell? I think I think um we may have number nine on my list of people I'm genuinely scared of right now. Um, moving on. Uh <laughs> So we come to a simple question here on Whatever School. What is something that you find cool that nobody else does? Hmm. I had an answer for this one, but it's like you've added you've added the extra bit of like no one else does, and now I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go with Winx Club. Winx Club was my <laughs> growing up. It was honestly the best TV show for me. I don't know why. But I actually thought that is that is something that you were going to say. My other answer was witchcraft, but like I know that a couple of people do that around me, so that's okay. Wings Club, on the other hand, I haven't heard anyone else talk about it, so like you know. No, me. I think I think um, oh, I can't remember because we talked we talked we talked about something um the last show that we were at, and for some reason I always thought you were a Wings Club fan, so that's why I'm like, how the. What, what you know? Why don't I just like say what I think you might that might be? <laughs> um, Magic. Yeah, true. Um, one thing I, before we before we wrap up, there is something I want to talk a bit talk to you about, and it's it, again, it's no secret. If you watch, uh, uh, sorry, not watch. If you check out uh, Savannah's uh, Instagram page, you are a um, an illustrator and you are writing a book at the moment. Uh, Correct. For, firstly, love your illustrations. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Um, make sure to uh, you know make an illustration of me. Um, the the book itself. You know what? What can we expect from it, and um, when can we expect it to come out? Ooh, those are big questions. Mm. So, 
<laughs> as for when it's going to come out, I honestly do not have a date for that one. This is still in the very early stages. I'm still working out kinks in the plot and whatnot. Mm. Um, the general gist, however, is that this is a post-apocalyptic uh, world where everything has been destroyed by angels um, and we have our lovely city center, Arcadis Rise, which is supposed to be a safe haven. It's not. Um, and we ba- essentially follow a little band of misfit demons and humans and other magical beings trying to take down the leader of Arcadis Rise so that there can be no more oppression. All right. Because <laughs> I, 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 every time you post something about it, I'm always amazed at, at your art. And, um, Thank you. <laughs> I'm ve- I'm, I'm re- I really am looking forward to, to seeing it because uh, for those who don't know, you know, you, you did design your, your, your T-shirt as well, which is yes. absolutely great. Um, you did uh, Nova's one, Zoms. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was Ooh. a third. Was it? I can't remember. Who's the, who was the other one? There was, there's one other illustration that you did. I can't remember who the other one was. No, 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 no. So, so I haven't done No Raw Soms art. Um, oh, the, that wasn't you? No. So oh, that okay. was actually um, Som that did, uh, I don't know about his own, but I'm pretty sure he, I, I know he did know this. Okay. Um, the ones that I've done, I've done uh, Misfortunes. I've done JSAs. Uh, um, I've done a few designs for both the Valentines. Uh, and most recently I have done some stuff for Zane Zodiac as well. Ooh. When's that coming out? I, I don't want to check that one out. Mm. <laughs> is that, it should, is that, it should is be that, coming uh, out soon. That's with that, and that's with a uh, 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 sponsor, Rosemary Clothing, I'm presuming, yeah? Absolutely, always. Okay, yeah, definitely. So definitely check that out when it comes out and, uh, um, you know, spend all your money on those shirts because uh, they're pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I just, I just wish I had my Savannah Rose T-shirt on right now. But then again, I'm wearing a beautiful Conflict Action T-shirt. So I'm not complaining at all. No, not at all. <laughs> hey, it's your fiance. You know, that's part of this group. He's made poor choices, all right. He's made poor choices. We can very clearly see that he's the good, he's the okay one in the group. I'm going to stop digging my grave now. Yeah, about to say, because, like, you know, the, the making wrong choice, I'm just like, maybe being with him might be one. Um, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I am not being serious. Like all jokes aside, right? I love Marshall to death. Okay, I love Marshall. He yeah. is. He is half the reason that I am the wrestler I am today. You know, he has obviously been a very big part in my career and in my mm. training as well. Um, alongside obviously, you know, Jason Crash, Chris Law. Um, so yeah, I've got I've got to pay some respect to him. He's very mm. lovely. Yeah, no, <laughs> uh, like like jokes aside, absolute sweetheart. I love him. Um, God, I can't, I can't, I can't stress how much I love that man. Um, and I just can't wait for his his uh, short film to come out as well because that was that was that was my God, how oh. fun how fun was that for us to, to be part of? Take, oh, oh my God, take it from me who was there for four out of five shoot days for that one it was an absolute blast and i'm so excited for it to be finished and mm. v- like viewable to the general public because it is so good mm. uh the one the one thing i will tell you about this and uh, uh, eventually when i have him on on the show i want to talk more about that whole that whole project uh obviously the last day of shooting for us when we were in, in at um at the adrenaline zone we were, we were having a pizza party we were watching um I've forgotten what it's called, but it's Chris Laws' uh, short film. Ah, oh, Surf Trash. <laughs> surf yeah. Trash too. Oh my god, I got, I got to put, I got to make sure I find the link, and it'll, it'll be in, yes. the, in the description. Um, oh, you'll love that. The commentary from everyone during that was the is it, that was pro- quite possibly the best forty minutes of my entire life. <laughs> you know, it's such a great little short film, and obviously we know that Laws a god. We know that he's so good at everything that he does. Yeah. His performance in it was fantastic. <laughs> It was so good, and um, like, uh, it was an experience. It was a definitely experience. Like, I've done, I've done, I've done some short films in the past, and I, I, I'll, and this is not me kissing his ass or anything like this. Honestly, um, I've never been more welcome on a set. I've never been more um humbled in a set as well. But also, never had that much fun on the set as well. Like, he was just absolutely fantastic, and absolutely. Oh my god, I can, honestly can't wait for that. So. Yeah, make sure to follow uh, Here Is Your Winner on all socials. Uh, link is in the description to follow up when it will premiere because it will be 
definitely interesting to, to, to see because um, I've read only the, what I was part of, so I don't know the rest of the, rest of the story, and I can't wait to see you know, what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, Savannah Rowe, where can we find you on all your socials? So, oh, crap, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you will most predominantly find me on Instagram at Savannah Rowe underscore PW. Um, you can also find me on Facebook. Just type in Savannah Row. Um, I'm not really on Twitter, so don't bother trying to find me there. Um, and if you're interested in following my art slash book journey, then go to Instagram and look up crystal underscore witch underscore art and witch is spelt with a Y because I'm edgy. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, no TikTok? None that I'll show. <laughs> 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 oh okay well so it has been an absolute pleasure i can't wait to have you on again um mostly i i can't wait to do this yeah, reaction video for you in the future when the footage does come out because i reckon that's going to be stellar because I've, I've heard a lot of good things not just from people that we know just from fans as well but also said this is you know it was one of the ma uh, matches of the night so i can't wait to see that so Vanuar, thank you for being part of whatever it's called my pleasure thanks for having me and that's the end of that episode. Want to be featured on Waterford School or know someone with an amazing story that needs to be told? Reach out to me. I can be reached on waterfordschoolbusiness at gmail.com. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. Want more from Waterford School? Make sure to check out the YouTube channel where you can find the latest episodes of Mukbang Around, Reaction, and of course, the vlogcast. And don't forget to follow Waterford School on all socials. It can be found at Waterford School. Keep that sport coming. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.